Test control, you are go for Excel to Mach 1.1. Go for Excel, Castro Gate. Castro Gate, go for Excel. So this is the really exciting part. Watch the Mach number in the middle of the screen. Space one, full gate. Three engines and afterburner. Mach number's ticking up. There we are. XB1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. We've got confirmation from the control room that it, she is supersonic. What a wonderful achievement. Geppetto and the whole team know what a really historic moment this is. The first civil aircraft independently constructed that has ever flown supersonic. And Geppetto is the first pilot ever to do it. It is really thrilling moment. But we can see her right now watching it. Um, it, today was just a, a huge, huge day. This is uh, the first civilian supersonic flight in 22 years. Uh, the first time a civil supersonic jet built in America has uh, broken the sound barrier. And also the, the first time a civil supersonic jet has been built outside of a nation state. Uh, than today, and I'm pretty sure he didn't expect to get three three cracks at it. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, Mike, when I was out there at the fence line, I, I, I just took a moment just for me. I, I just watched it take off because every time that uh, we've flown uh, to date, I've been in the control room looking at data. So I had, like, myself a little Anakin Skywalker moment there. <laughs> Let me look upon you with my own eyes. And it was it was truly emotional just to see. You know, we, we, we were a little disappointed there was no boom. Um, uh, uh, at, in today's flight conditions, we only thought there was about a 10% chance uh, that there was an audible boom, and there was there was a lot of cheering, but no sonic boom. And in the carrier landing, of course, there's also a chat that, or a lady that stands on the carrier and gives you landing directions. The the pilot, we will hear him relay in numbers. It might be something like saying 1.8, you know, uh, and have visual contact with the runway uh, because. You know, XP-1, much like the Concorde, when flying on approach uh, at slow speeds, they're very nose high, even though they're descending. So, so it's really a regulatory constraint. Um, uh, t t today, we have one of the, the silliest rules in the world, which is you can't fly supersonic over land, uh, no matter how quiet the airplane is. And so we are, you know, we're picking up where Concorde left off. Uh, initially, we'll fly right under the speed of sound over land, which is still 20% faster than a Boeing or Airbus. And over the water, we'll open up the throttles and go twice as fast. And that means that uh, already there are about 600 of the routes, uh, 600 routes around the planet that will benefit from big speed ups. The, the longest flights in the world tend to be the ones that are transoceanic. So that's where we're starting. Coming up for fuel burn. But what you see there is we have uh, the altitude on. Chase one, and we're ready to go. Chase one, set, see ya. So let's take advantage of this and just watch XB1 on her takeoff rule as she leaps into the air for the first ever supersonic flight of an independently developed civilian supersonic aircraft. Wow, that was fantastic. Doesn't she look gorgeous? Especially when the gear's up, she looks an absolutely beautiful airplane. And in the pilot's world, we say that if an aircraft looks right, she'll fly right. And XB-1 certainly looks right. Three, two, one, mark. So that's the mark for Geppetto to select the undercarriage down. Here she comes. I just want to mention we have two LSOs who have supported us on this mission. Uh, Zach Pleiss, uh, call sign Sprite, again, a former naval aviator. So what, what we'll be listening for is Paddle's contact in a, in a very nice, calm, friendly voice. Uh, so I, I don't think there's any question of whether passengers want faster flights. I don't know a single one who wants to spend more time on an airplane, provided that the, the flight is affordable and safe and convenient and comfortable. Um, 
And I don't. Uh, and the airlines have you know, spoken with their their money that they they want supersonic flights because you know, half a century after Concord, we have the, the technology not just to go fast, but to do it in a way that's economically viable, that's profitable. Um, and really, the question the question remaining was, can we do it? And um, you know, I, we've known theoretically you know, inside the company for a long time we could, and you know, today I think we've shown the world we can. And and now it's now it's time. You know, today we'll celebrate. Tomorrow we get back to work. It's time to scale up and and uh, to go build the version that you and I get to fly on. Center line 50 feet on center line 40 on center line 30, 20, 10, 5, 3. And she's down right on the numbers. Absolutely beautiful. Right on the numbers, right on the center line. And I'm going to turn around and watch her roll out down the runway.